Last night, in the middle of the night, Bill C-10 was passed in the House of Commons, 1.40 in the morning. This is a censorship bill that will heavily regulate content that is seen by Canadians. This is going to be involving internet censorship of the likes we have never seen before. Now, a couple of hours after this had happened, I was awake very, very early in the wee hours as well, and I had an idea. So I, since I couldn't sleep, I started to write. And I wanted to refer to Alexander Solzhenitsyn's Gulag Archipelago in order to find the quote that I was looking for. And so I ended up rereading today his Nobel Laureate acceptance speech, which he had to deliver from afar because in 1972 he was still living under the oppressive regime of the USSR and therefore he wasn't able to accept his prize until two years later in person. And I found something today that made me think of our current situation. This is from his speech. Woe to the nation whose literature is disturbed by the intervention of power because that is not just a violation against freedom of print. It is the closing down of the heart of the nation, a slashing to pieces of its memory. The nation ceases to be mindful of itself. It is deprived of its spiritual unity. And despite a supposedly common language, compatriots suddenly cease to understand one another. Silent generations grow old and die without ever having talked about themselves, either to each other or to their descendants. When writers, interred alive throughout their lives, are condemned to create in silence until they die, never hearing the echo of their written words, then that is not only their personal tragedy, but a sorrow to the whole nation, a danger to the whole nation. In some cases, moreover, when as a result of such a silence, the whole of history ceases to be understood in its entirety, it is a danger to the whole of mankind. I think it's safe to say that the whole of history has not been understood in its entirety. And where we find ourselves today is perhaps an extension of ideas that never died and that have festered in the dark and grown worse over the last 85 years or so. So this is where we find ourselves very dark days in Canada and the rest of the world. However, Canada's despotism is quite outstanding. So we also had something happen in the last 24 hours which mirrored this kind of horror. And um, it is that now people who travel, Canadian citizens who travel back into the country will be required to show proof of vaccination if they've been vaccinated fully or partially or not at all. So this is something that has been posted here on Justin Trudeau's Twitter. And it requires that Canadian citizens take a test before they leave their country that they've traveled to and then take a test again upon arrival within 72 hours, um, sorry, 72 hours before their arrival to Canada and then upon arrival. And then it says, have your arrive can receipt and documents ready, including digital or paper copy of proof of vaccination. And so then after entry into the country, it says, if you meet all of the entry requirements and are fully vaccinated, you are exempt from quarantine, government authorized hotel and the day eight test. So basically, throughout the past 15 months or so, Canadian citizens have been subjected to this 14-day quarantine. Uh, they've been coerced to go into these so-called 
government authorized hotels, which are really detention centers for travelers with horrific conditions at their own expense and at a, a ludicrous expense. So now what's happening is if you've received your injections, then you no longer need to quarantine. You are exempt from this quarantine. So this is just the, the first steps in separating vaccinated or injected, immunized uh, via injection rather than natural immunity. Um, it's a way of, of dividing the citizens into two groups and of continuing to punish people who have not received these injections and to decentivize them from traveling and to make it very difficult for them to have a pleasant travel experience and one that they can afford. I mean, these, these hotels, which should not even be called hotels, as I said, more detention centers for travelers um, cost you more than your vacation in certain sense. So this is where we're at between the censorship and now this push towards the uh, vaccine passports with Arrive Can. That's where we're at in Canada. So I would just like to say that um, we really enjoy your support as our viewers. Thank you for being here. Please leave your comments below and let me know what you think about what's going on. Um, please also be sure to follow uh, this channel. If you're not subscribed, please do, because what's going to happen with this new censorship bill is that there will be a lot more shadow banning and that it is going to be inevitable that our content will show up less in your feed. So please do that. We're also on Odyssey. It would be great if you subscribe there and we're working on always optimizing the videos for Odyssey so that you have a good streaming experience. Um, this is the kind of um, realities that we have to deal with. So you can also find me on Twitter as well as William at WG underscore Gervais, G-E-R-V-A-S on Twitter. And I am on Substack, katewand.substack. There's a Telegram channel also at Kate Wand and Facebook. So there you go. There you have it. So I hope that you enjoyed this short video describing uh, just the surface of the censorship bill, C-10. Uh, be aware that this is something that is going to uh, become quite pervasive in the uh, everyday lives, the social media posts, the way that we view and receive information. Uh, if this fully passes at Senate, which it's obviously now just a matter of a stamp of approval, it should not be difficult to do. Um, so that's where we're at. Thank you again, and I hope that you've enjoyed our content as of late. We had a great video come out about the G7 hypocrisy, and there was another one previous to that on the COVID diet, which is the diet of information that we're put on, kind of like what's going on with the censorship here. All of the information is already so tightly controlled. There's been billions of dollars put into propaganda campaigns and uh, creating the narrative that the government and uh, special interest uh, corporations and, and other organizations would like you to see. That's it for tonight and take care everyone.